we're going to pull an apple on people. I don't mean the fruit. I mean the company. They come out with a phone. They say it's great. Then they turn around and say, okay, we said that was the best one. But here's really the best one. The only difference is instead of waiting a whole year, I'm going to do it right now. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and I know we launched the V6 of the Intune device migration tool last week, but V6.1 just went up today. Now, it there were some ideas in V6 that just weren't good, and I've said this, and this is why it's great having the Discord community. People can provide feedback. I'm, I, I'm thrilled that so many people are using the tool that they can give me feedback, but the thing with the lock screen images, uh, yeah, it just wasn't good. It was short-sighted and what are you going to do, right? So um, since then, been working on it, have a whole new layout of it, but we're going to go through it. Today, I want to focus on the end user experience and, you know, kind of be the first to show you what it's supposed to look like. And then this week, we'll take a look at each part of it. So stay tuned. No, really, this is absolutely the best one uh, yet. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is take a look at the solution. We're going to go to github.com, uh, Steve Capacity, and there it is, Intune Device Migration V6.1. Um, and you can see the biggest new features are the lock screens. Um, we got rid of the whole idea of using images, and now we're using the legal notice policy to set dynamic text. And then functions. Uh, this is kind of probably the biggest thing. Let me go ahead and download this just so I could show you. Um, let's take a look at it. So if we extract all, extract, we can open this with code. And uh, you're going to like this because if I go to, like, let's say start migrate.ps1, um, everything's been, you know, put in a function. So. Uh, whether it be functions to write logs, fun functions for getting the JSON itself. Um, you can click up here in the function place and, and you can just scroll through all the, you can see all the functions. In fact, you could even suppress this and open the outline and, um, you know, you could see all the separate functions. So if you wanted to see, wait, can I filter by type? Uh, by category there we go so if we sort by category and then filter on type so you could see everything in here so can we sort by position yeah so you can see all the functions in here you can see the variables when they're set when they run functions so it, and, and you could jump right to it so this same code but it's a lot more modular so i, I think a lot of folks are going to enjoy it um so I'm not going to go through all this now. A lot of this we're going to go into subsequent episodes. So what I want to do is take you through a migration. Um, so let's take a look. This is a device joined to the Rubix tenant. You can see Han Solo at rubixdev.com. And we can see rubixdev.com. Um, if we look at this device... Uh, 6974. Let's hop over to our lab real quick and open into you. Okay. Well, what are you telling me? No, the password's correct. So if we go to our devices, this is our device. So we are enrolled in rubixdev.com. You've seen this before we kind of walk through this so what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the whole process we're going to open the company portal we are going to click on intune device migration i've been through a lot of versions of this was like the 12th iteration testing this is a pain uh <laughs> so uh hopefully i i found the bulk of the issues so you won't but yeah this is the tool we're going to install it and I'm kind of going to highlight some of the uh, some of the pieces that have changed. Um, the biggest one being the lock screen. So, same as before, as soon as it installs, it's going to run the provisioning package to bring us to the new tenant. All right. So, as soon as the provisioning package runs, 
uh, we get the notification that we're about to be signed out. And the machine is going to reboot. So what we've done is we've condensed the reboots instead of a reboot with an automatic one, another reboot five minutes later with one more at the end, we've shortened it to basically this is the f each one has an automated. So there's four total reboots, but they're very automated. So here we go. So in the first reboot that we see here, take a look. We immediately get this screen migration in progress. Your PC is being migrated to tenant name you can insert you don't have to do anything there just modify the json uh and it'll reboot automatically within 30 seconds the end user will know what's going on to them and there we go that was so that was one this is two and now here the user can just click to log in however now we could tell them hey join your tenant name sign in with your new email address and password to start migrating your data i'll hit okay and now I will sign in with Han Solo at stevecapacity.com. Okay. As soon as we log in there, the new profile is created and we're, we're running a task to capture that SID. So in about 10 seconds, we're going to trigger our third reboot. So the goal is the user is not going to you know, they're not going to get a chance to, to, to mess anything up here, right? So we got it all buttoned up um, before they even get to the desktop. So there's our third reboot. The enrollment status page actually comes in handy right there. Okay, and now prior to the last reboot, we see this message almost there. Your PC, PC will restart one more time to join your new tenant named Tenant. If I hit OK... We stop them with this guy, migration in progress. So it's a pseudo username we've put in. We've, uh, we at this point, the local login provider for the password is revoked. So nothing will work here. If someone wants to try it, they can't, they can't log in. So obviously communication is important. So you're going to want to make some kind of guide to send these screens to an end user ahead of time. But, you know, again, this whole process, we've been running for a few minutes now. That was it. That's the last reboot. So now I'm going to take you around and show you what that experience looks like now that we're in. So on last reboot, we could just sign in. Welcome to tenant name. Your PC is now part of the new environment. And here we go. It defaults to the correct username. Now that was it. A big difference from previous versions is we do not have to wait for data to come back. We don't have to wait for files to migrate over. What we literally did was we took over the original profile with the new user SID. So while we're just waiting for this to finish up, I just want to show you um, the device here. Uh, so if I were to go back and refresh, right, it's already gone here. It's not in the tent. Okay, so just wanted to make that clear. There's a lot of communication to, to the end user as far as what's going on. Uh, without it taking too long, right? So they're going to be up and running in no time. And here we are. Um, and, and it doesn't really, you know, to them it's the same. Now you can see I didn't lose anything on the desktop in terms of uh, my documents. In fact, if I were to go to desktop, you can see, but if I click documents, everything is still here, right? Um so that's really good. If we want to go to the settings and have a look to accounts. Okay, so we can see now it's been changed to Steve Capacity. And when I go to Access Worker School, it's Steve Capacity. Um, so, you know, we've migrated over, no issue. Um, and if we look at the users, and this was a big sticking point in previous versions, I go to this PC, see users. Um, there's only one Han Solo. There's only one Han Solo. And it's it's the, the, the token from the new Azure tenant is fine. If I open the company portal, it's just going to have me authenticate. It's going to auto-authenticate me. So you can see all those apps from previously are gone because um, we're not in that tenant anymore. Um, so let's go take a quick look at the new tenant. So if I go to devices now, let's have a look. Uh, so there it is. 
and you can see it's still getting acclimated. Um, there is no primary user yet, right? Because the, the user that enrolled it is the provisioning package, right? So this is gonna update itself shortly. All right, so if we go back to check on the device, I hit refresh. This takes a moment to update, but if I click on the device, let's see, yep. So you can see the primary user has been now upgrade, updated from the provisioning package or none to uh, Han Solo, who is logged in. If we go to group membership, the device, because we gave it the M365 tag, it ended up in the correct, uh, in the correct group. Of course, the last step is ultimately going to be being registered on autopilot, but we have that set to be much later. Um, uh, about, I would say 15 minutes after we run that task. Okay. And the last thing I want to point out to you is if you take a look at the logs, the logs were a little hit or missed previously. So again, if we were to open one of these, so for start migrate, they're a lot more streamlined. So you can literally see each step that was taken. Um, if we were to have a problem. So for example, um, we threw a failure on looking for old tasks. Um, we could throw a warning, validate device integrity post migration. If a task was critical enough, we could just do an exit on it and stop the whole thing. Um, we're checking for the domain, not domain joined. It is Azure AD joined leaving. So that's a lot cleaner. Okay, so that took, it was a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, hopefully, uh, everyone will find it a little more helpful again the functions being modular and we are going to go into detail um in the next few episodes but i just wanted to show that end user experience because um when you look at what it is to the end user you know we don't want them to have having to kind of second guess what to do or tell them don't log in here or do log in so now with the dynamic uh device lock it seems a lot more uh, efficient also without migrating the data, right? Without migrating the data and we're just reclaiming the old profile and, and getting rid of the new one. Now that the new one has taken over the old, we've shaved so much time off of it. So definitely a smoother process. Feel free to try it out. The link is going to be below. Hop in the discord. Let me know. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, uh, again, so much of this came from the community who's been using this. So it's really awesome for me to have people, you know, you write something, they're testing it out. It's super exciting. So, you know, jump in later. Five, four, three.